What up, Cowboys Nation? It's your boy DMV back with another one. I know it's been a while. I kind of just let the season ride out because I, you know, I mean, I, I was just not necessarily too disgusted to do a video, but I just felt that the way that things were going, I just didn't want to use my time and energy for it, quite honestly. And, you know, I had been hanging out with a lot of fans and talking to, to, to other Cowboys fans as well. So, um, I mean, now that the season is over, we have a clean slate and I want to start brand new, brand new energy for this team. All right. And right now I'm live from Texas. I did come down. I stayed in Dallas for a few days. I just did a stadium tour not too long ago, um, a, a couple of days ago, actually. And I'll share some of the pictures with you. But um, honestly, guys, we're in a situation right now where there's kind of some limbo, but there's always limbo in Dallas. We can't even fire anybody, right, as my man Mark Holmes likes to say. But right now, Jason Garrett is still our coach, but it doesn't look like him or his staff will be back. So um, I wanted to talk about an article that Troy Aikman, uh, you know, was quoted in on the Star Telegram, and I'll make sure to leave the link in the description below. But Here's a couple of quotes from it where he says, why wouldn't you go back to what worked? And basically he was alluding to was the only way that it worked under Jerry Jones is when he had a head coach that everybody answered to. Now, this is something that I've talked about quite a bit. Uh, if you have seen me on Mark Holmes' channel or E2 Blues, I talked about having accountability to one person. And that is the organization. Um, you look at the players. How it's been structured is they've been they've been accountable to multiple people, so it can cr create some confusion as far as my urgency. Does my urgency need to be towards the owner GM, or does it need to be towards the head coach? And what Troy Aikman is talking about is the accountability is to the head coach and the structure that he's talking about. And what I believe is I believe that the players have become too close, or Jerry has become too close to the groundwork. And things can't work like they want to or, or, or how they should. The players should be playing with urgency in playing to stay on the roster as far as playing and performance. If my performance isn't up to standard, the coach is going to put somebody in or bring somebody on the roster that is going to do that job. Here, if all I got to do is make the owner fall in love with me, he's kind of like a grandfather figure, so he's not going to get rid of me. And if I get cool with him, I already know he has the coach by the balls. I already know that the coach doesn't make the decision. I already know that the coach doesn't really necessarily hire his staff on his own. I already know that the coach can't really make any football decisions without going upstairs. So as a player, why would I have the accountability towards the coach when all I got to do is get in cool with the owner who's hanging with us? who's down there talking to us in the locker room, meeting with us like he is a head coach. Why do I even need to go to my head coach and even show him the type of urgency there if I'm right next to the head honcho? That's how it's been. <laughs> that's how things have been going in Dallas for the last 20 some odd years. And that's why we haven't been to an NFC championship game. And, until we change that structure, we're going to keep getting what we're getting right now. So what I mean by that is I'm not necessarily sure how much at fault Jason Garrett is, to be completely honest, because when has he actually been allowed to really coach this team or make any real decisions that head coaches at winning programs have or make or, or, or have that type of power? So... I'm not absolving him at all because I do think that, you know, the things that he could control, I don't think that he was very great at. But I will say that I don't think that the structure of how things are right now helped him at all. But with that being said, I don't believe that he's going to be back. So I want to give you guys my top five candidates for who I think will be our head coach or should be our head coach. This is coming from me. This is all opinion. This is so number five. I have other. Uh, other meaning, you know, I want to wait and, and see what this playoffs, how these playoffs play out, because you never know. You know, the playoffs is where you have equal talent, but the coaching is what prevails. The coaching is what takes you over the top. So maybe there's a young coach out there or maybe there's a coach that, you know, had a stint before, 
but you know their coordinator now or something like that and then their coaching is what takes it over the top and they've learned from their mistakes in the past and they're ready to you know take over um so i say other for number five number four i say urban meyer i know that he's a favorite for a lot of people i do think that he could fit everything that troy was talking about where it's a guy who can hold accountability for the players and it be one source I think Urban Meyer can do that. I think he has the personality to do that. I think he's won everywhere that he's gone. I think that he's very smart. I think that him and Bel and, and Coach Belichick uh, kind of go hand in hand when it comes to ideology. And, you know, they bounced ideas off of each other and stuff when he was at Florida. So I think that Urban Meyer could definitely, maybe not the first year, but I think that if he did, you know, commit to it, I think that Urban Meyer could be, become a, a pretty good head coach, especially for Dallas because – uh, for Dallas, you need a, a head coach that can not only, you know, command the troops, but you need somebody that is pretty much a politician as well, because that's the Dallas Cowboy way. Um, number three is Eric Bieniemy from uh, Kansas City. Uh, the reason that I like him is because he's from the Andy Reid tree, and I trust the Andy Reid tree. And ultimately, we need this head coach to have a great relationship with our quarterback, because like of the night, Dak Prescott is going to be our quarterback. We need somebody that's going to develop him. Or put him in a situation to where we're running an offense that is playing to his strengths. Because if we're going to pay him this big contract that we're going to pay him, uh, ultimately, uh, we need to make sure that we take care of our investment. And if you think about the money that we're spending, we just paid, made Zeke the highest paid running back. And then you're going to probably make Dak Prescott a top five quarterback as far as money goes. Um, the winner that falls this year. So with your quarterback and your running back taking up a big chunk of the salary cap, even though we're going to have a lot of money in the salary cap, you want to make sure that we have an offense in place that's going to feature both of them and they complement off of each other. So I think Eric bien would be a, a, a very solid candidate there. And while I talk about offense and I talk about featuring your running back and your quarterback, why not let's, let's talk about a guy who is doing that currently in Baltimore, Greg Roman. Um, Greg Roman has done a, a fantastic job with Lamar Jackson and other quarterbacks. Another one to be named is, is Colin Kaepernick. Now, I know a lot of people believe that Dak has some type of limitations. Um, and, uh, you know, we have to overcome that. Well, whatever those limitations are, he doesn't have any more limitations than what Colin Kaepernick had and than what Lamar Jackson had as far as a passer. And you saw what he was able to do with both of those guys. I think that Dak Prescott has a lot of the same skill sets as the two guys that I named, no, he's not as flashy or as athletic as um, Lamar Jackson, but he does have the ability to hide the ball, play action fake, um, pretty good in the RPO. So I think that a lot of the things that Greg Roman is able to do in Baltimore could work for that. If you saw the LA Rams game, we did a lot of the same wrinkles from the Baltimore tape and Dak looked pretty good doing it. So I think, and our offense looked pretty good. So I think that Greg Roman could very well fit in very well with what we're trying to do and hopefully we can put some defensive coaches around them um and you know we 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 be back in the ball game number one my guy i say jim harbaugh why because again you go back to a guy that is really good with quarterbacks good at developing quarterbacks we talked about him he hired greg roman had greg roman um out in san fran um had colin kaepernick as a quarterback had alex smith if you saw the jump from Alex Smith from when he was uh, before Harbaugh, Harbaugh, when he was with Mike Singletary, and then you see the jump, you know, you see the jump in Colin Kaepernick's game. Now, I know that things aren't working out at Michigan like they are, but in my opinion, I think it's because Michigan just doesn't have the type of players that everybody else does. Um, yeah, Harbaugh loses the big games in Michigan, but in the NFL, he did a very good job of winning big games. And I think that we have the skill set and the type of team that San Fran had when he coached them. And I think that not only that, the Harbaugh's know the NFL. They know the ins and outs. They know how to run the team. You look at his brother. His father was a coach. The Harbaugh's are pretty much made to coach football. So Jim Harbaugh, I think, has the ability to not only coach football, but he was in San Fran, which is a historic franchise as well. And he held that pretty good as far as the politician game goes. I think that he's a strong enough personality to be that one guy that everybody's accountable to, like we talked about with Troy's comments and stuff as well. So those are my five top candidates right there. Um, 
Thank you guys for tuning in. And while I'm in Texas, man, I'm in Austin for today. And then tomorrow, I'll go back to Dallas. So if you guys can recommend any restaurants or anything like that while I'm here, that would be uh, great. Um, also, any real estate agents as well, because me and my family are possibly thinking of a move to Texas and possibly Austin or Dallas. So if you know any real estate agents, go ahead and plug them in as well. So uh, again, thank you for listening. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, hit that bell. You're talking about come out with content. All right, peace.